Hi, I'm Karen Rogers. Thank you and welcome back. It's time for video number 39. Today we're going to talk about cotton. I was driving by a field in southern Kansas and I saw a cotton field and I picked a couple pieces and I wanted to share it with you and share some information about cotton production. When I did the research, I found out so much information and I really am looking forward to sharing it with you. Now, unfortunately, a lot of the history of cotton production and even today is uh, not, it's controversial and not just in the United States, but worldwide. The thing about cotton is it is extremely lucrative. It's a cash crop. People grow it to sell it, not for personal use. And in the South, it's called king cotton or white gold. Unfortunately, where there is money, there is usually power and corruption. And in the case of cotton, a lot of the wealth belongs to a few that dictate the life um, for the workers, which is usually means poverty or slavery. Let's talk a little bit about the uses of cotton. Uh, you use it as soon as you wake up and take a shower and use towels you, when you put on your clothes. And then when you go to bed at night, you wrap up in the sheets that are made of cotton. Cotton is everywhere. We use it not only in fabrics and sheets and towels and upholstery, but it's also used, uh, the seed is used, cotton seed oil. If you don't believe me, check the ingredients on some of your processed snacks, and it will probably say partially hydrogenated cotton seed oil. And that oil is... Um, used it helps the partial hydrogenation process helps increase the shelf life and even the waste after they process they take off the lint they take the seeds what is left is ground up and put in food for livestock and then the waste anything else is ground up and put back into the soil for nutrients so no part of the cotton plant is wasted Let's talk just a little bit about the cotton plant. It grows just like a regular plant, and it has this, this piece right here, this brown piece is usually like a bud. It starts off as a bud. It's called a bowl, B-O-L-L. -L. And bef before the bowl actually is a flower, and if you'd like to, I've got a video on um, plant reproduction that talks about this, but first there's a flower, then the pollination occurs, the flower drops off and forms the seed. In this case, it's the bowl. The bowl then pops open and you have this cotton that is made of cellulose and in the cotton is the seed. And you can pick it out. It's kind of tough to pick out these seeds, but I'll find one for you and rip it out here. But this is a piece of cotton seed, and that is used for in production. The seed, this soft part is called the lint. And what happens is you pick the cotton from the plant, and then you compress it and sell it, and then it gets taken to a place where it is cleaned, the seeds are removed, and then they take these fibers and they spin them into threads and people can actually do this by hand they take a little machine that spins and they just it spins into these threads and then the threads will get woven into make fabrics it's it's real interesting the stuff i was watching i was watching some youtube videos and they've got really big production assemblies. They'll take a big tractor, they pick all the cotton, it goes ahead and puts it into the bales, and then they take it to another factory where it's cleaned, and then after they clean it, it's they just have all these machines that spin all this thread. Or you can also look up videos where they do it at home. They just take cotton and clean it and spin it at home. It's, it's really interesting. All right, cotton is grown all over the world where it's hot. I've got a picture here. I don't know how well you can see this, but the yellow is the places where it's grown and the pink is, is the highest level, more production there. Worldwide, 
but cotton likes hot climates. Not too hot, it can't be in a desert, but it likes hot climates and it is grown. It just blows my mind that it's grown worldwide. It's so important. And now they have machines that can pick the cotton, but if you don't have an expensive machine, then it is still picked by hand in some cases. Cotton has been used since ancient times. They have records of cotton being used 500 to thousands of years ago BC. That just boggles my mind that it's been used by humans, ancient humans, and for so long, and how that we still use it today. Uh, the thing about cotton, from a farmer's viewpoint, is first you got to plant it, and then hope that the weather works out and that you have some nice plants that grow. You don't want them to be killed by pesticide, or, or not pesticides, by pests. You don't want them to be killed by pests or insects like the boll weevil. Uh, you don't want them eaten by animals and you don't want them to be taken over by weeds. Well, if that all happens nicely and you have this nice crop, then you still have to harvest it. You have to pick it and compress it and send it within a given amount of time. It's, it's a lot of work. Now, there is a company, it's called Monsanto. Monsanto has a lot of negative publicity around it because they use uh, chemistry, science, and farming. They kind of combine it all, and they have made products that are harmful, toxic to the environment and to living things like Agent Orange, PCBs, and um, Roundup. Well, what Monsanto did is they took they have made this genetically modified cotton seed. And they took a gene from a bacteria, from, from bacteria, it's called Bt, and that gene naturally kills pests. So they splice that gene into the cotton, and now the cotton will grow and produce a toxin that will kill pests. So it's naturally resistant to pests. Another thing, is they can modify it so that it is resistant to herbicides. So you can spray your cotton crops with Roundup and it will kill the weeds, but it won't kill the cotton. And this can be beneficial. Probably, I think 70% of the cotton is grown by um, genetically modified seeds but there are some disadvantages and one of the cases is um, in if you in India there are a lot of farmers and they are sold the BT cotton seeds they don't have good luck with them and they end up losing money and a lot of cotton farmers in India go into debt because they can't afford their farms and there's a lot of suicides that happen because um, the farmers are just in despair it's, it's really sad. Like I said, this is, um, cotton production is, there's a lot of controversy that surrounds it. And that's just one case. And I didn't even mention um, the slavery in the United States. But let's talk about that just a little bit um, with the cotton gin. Now you can't really talk about cotton without talking about Eli Whitney. Here's his picture. And he patented the first cotton gin. And what that is, is you could put the cotton in this machine and crank the machine. Gin actually is short for engine. But you crank the machine and it will pick out the seeds, which saved a lot of human or slave labor. The only problem is, is because this could speed up the production, there was a greater production, then there was a greater demand, and so they needed more slaves to continue with the cotton production process. But that's Eli Whitney and the cotton gin. It revolutionized the production of cotton. And my purpose of this video really was to um, just show you what a cotton plant looks like. I'm a biologist and I wanted you to see how it grows naturally if you've never seen it. It's just, it's fascinating. It just, it boggles my mind. And you can see real natural cotton. Of course, we use it in for cotton balls or gauze. It's used in, in the medical industry to make Q-tips. I mean, it just 
it's mind boggling. <laughs> Anyway, but that's the cotton plant. I wanted you to see that, and then I wanted you to have some information about cotton production, things that you might not know. And I also want to say thank you. Thank you to everybody who's involved in cotton production, whether you're in the fields, the factories, the fabric stores. I appreciate. I appreciate my towels. I appreciate my clothes. I appreciate my bedding, my snacks, and Q-tips, everything that we get from cotton. So to you, I say thank you. And to the viewers, I thank you for watching this. I'm Karen Rogers. I educate, motivate, and entertain. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.